Okay, guys, I'm going to show you my first idea, ah! but I think we're shush. But we're going to abandon this idea. I'll show you why. So we pulled up on this beach and we tied to that sign warning electrical cable crossing do not anchor. We're not anchoring. Move away, big gravy. Ugh. Great little spot, and the Publix and the gas station is just right there, but let me show you why this is probably not going to work. That wave is going to scream at me the whole time. There's a sign over here, and this fence right here is the boundary, and let me show you what it says. So, it says, State Park Boundary, fee required to enter, use designated entrance only. So, that pretty much makes what we're doing breaking rules and laws and you know it's all sorts of people watching and they could just make a phone call and I would come back to see a ticket or my boat towed or who knows arrested so we're gonna go find another spot stay tuned you're gonna have to wait a little longer Beagle Hey guys, well, I was, you just saw the last footage there. I was debating whether to stay here. And this nice guy, he works at the park. And he came down. He said, he not giving me any trouble at all. He just said, go on the other side of the boundary. He even said I could make a couple trips up there. But just so we're not hurried, I'm going to go ahead and, and just get on the other side over here. But um, you see me all the time freaking out about not wanting to make people mad. And, and I never think that, like, the folks that I might make mad are actually really cool. So this would be one example. So <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. We're just going to go on the other side of this. That's right there. Okay, guys. So we just tied to the fence. Piece of cake. As long as we're on this side, that sign, and we took permission from the general manager of the park. Well, somehow we have to get over there from here without a crosswalk. Okay, second trip to the gas station. It's like playing Frogger out there, not getting hit by the traffic. We're in busy Florida now, at least compared to what I'm normally used to. Um, I'm leaving Wavy on the boat this time because she just makes it twice as hard. I'll take her for a second walk here when we're done. But but uh, stick around for this because I'm gonna show you why we're going through all the trouble of going to the gas station as opposed to the marina. out guys non-ethanol unleaded 87 in the blue I didn't see that the first time or I would have done it but we'll know from now on it's uh, 379 a gallon which is actually worth it okay guys remember when I told you that I'd show you why I'm going through all this trouble it's because I probably saved about 20 to 25 dollars by hoofing it instead of going to the marina so now we're going to go back to Publix which is just right over here and I'm going to spend 20 to 25 dollars on some food so I always need the exercise Wavy always needs a walk we always need food we always need gas and we don't have a job so all those things mean this is why I do the things I do if you have more money than I do which most of you do. I'm not telling you to do it my way, but <laughs> if you kind of do things similarly to what you see on my channel, little things like this add up. Um, a penny saved is a penny earned. It's one of the widest, wisest adages I think ever mumbled by anybody. So, uh, okay. Anyways, that's my little speech for the trip. 
for the day, for the episode, what have you. Let's go to Publix. Oh my goodness. Okay, try to our little spot. That was very helpful. Backing out, and we're gonna continue on. Stay tuned, guys. We're going into a really beautiful area. I'll show you on the map here. On the other side of those dunes right there is the open ocean. Okay, guys, I'm seeing dolphins. I'm gonna see if I can catch it for you. Here we go. Come on, guys. Come back out. <laughs> ah, they had their little play, and then they... Oh, there you are. Come on back out. There you go. Oh, look at that. They're just playing. Look at that. Okay, guys, gonna show you. We're right there and there's no combustion engines according to this map allowed in there plus it starts to get really shallow too so we're just parked out here so right on the other side of that berm right there is the open ocean we're kind of there's a what you call that an atoll of some sort or a, a barrier and they're doing some dredging and it's one of the spots right over here that's it's a it's a it's a spot where you can go from the intercoastal to the open ocean it's like a pass through <laughs> canal i don't know there's a there's a name for it i'll put it on the screen i'll i'll think of it later <laughs> but yeah very pretty place we're kind of out of the wind enough we're going to kind of bounce a little bit but that's okay and ever since i put that chain on that anchor it is hooking up so much better give me a break ah! give, give me a break give me a break ah! okay guys we are changing locations today to ride out the weekend we got another storm coming in for a couple days and it's really windy today but you know not a problem but i'm it's kind of no fun being out in it we are crossing <clears throat> Uh, an outlet, inlet outlet to the to the ocean right here, what I'm showing you. And I will show you on Navionics. So we're right there and this is actually goes all the way out in the ocean there as you can see. So <clears throat> but we are going, I'll show you where we're going in a minute. show you guys how some of these dredging operations are like floating cities just moving along to the next location I've seen like three or four out here just in this area I will find out more as we find a place to settle in for a couple days here guys but that is a lighthouse here in Pensacola. We will try to explore that because you guys know how much we like lighthouses on this channel. The wave conditions never really transfer over on film very good. I heard Barry at uh, <clears throat> Adventures of an Old Sea Dog say that too. <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is a windy day and there's a lot of chop out here. But the barge is handling it just fine. Not even close to being any real concern. Which is good. Just good practice. Good getting to know what it's capable of. So we're going to carry on. Well, we are getting some practice, guys. I'm trying to show you. I don't want to go out on the deck because I'm kind of tied to the wheel right now. But... We've got some rollers. It's a really, really messy seas here. And we're going into it, into the wind and into the rollers, but the uh, the barge is handling it just fine. I mean, I haven't even taken any water onto the deck. So, this is good. 
Here's here's some rollers here. We'll show you. Piece of cake. Okay guys, so we got behind somewhat of a wind shadow. We just got little little sloppy breakers out there. And they're not, I don't even know if they're breakers, but they're they're closer together, but they're smaller. And the, the bar just kind of skips over the top of them for the most part. Throws up some spray once in a while. We're coming into what we're doing because we're getting into this channel and we're gonna get back up into what's called Chico Bayou up here. So let me concentrate here and get us in there. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're coming into the channel. Looks like we made it. Oh, it always feels so good to get out of the wind and the waves into a safe harbor. Okay guys, we're just going deep in here and looking around. I kind of eyed a couple potential places to stop, but I want to look at the whole thing here first. All right guys, so I turned around. I'm starting to run out of depth and there's all the land around this bay is privately owned for the most part. There's gotta be something. We'll keep looking. There's another little channel right, right up in here. We'll go check out. Good morning guys and gals so we woke up this morning we're here in Pensacola still we've been here for three days I guess this is the third day not really where we want to be hanging out it's just too crowded every square inch is claimed you can't even really pull up to a dock without someone just running down and seeing what you're doing and I, I get it it's their business but it makes it hard to even take your dog to go pee you know and so in the <laughs> It's cold. It's still cold. It's probably the coldest day so far. Like, I, I didn't think it would get any colder, but it did. So we're going out to the bay and see if we can jump back on the ICW. I think the, the wind is coming from the east, so if we're just beating into the wind again today, I'm going to turn around and come back. But we're going to go check it out first. So let's see what happens. Stay tuned. Okay, guys and gals, so we went out to the mouth of Chico Bayou here, and the, it wasn't as bad as when we came in. I don't, it's hard to get that bad, but the wind's kicking up, and it's even more importantly, it's coming from the east, which we're trying to go east. So it's just stupid to beat into it. There's really no reason to leave here. We can hang out for another day. I guess we can just hang out as long as we want. I'm just kind of itching to get going, you know? Uh, so what we did <laughs> turned back around and parked at the dock at the ore house not the it, the ore o a r house <laughs> and they're not open yet but i asked a guy that worked there can i park until you guys open and he said yeah no problem so uh it's only eight in the morning they don't open till like 11 or noon or something like that so we're walking around and See if I can find something to show you guys. So let's see what we find. We're just moving to stay warm because it's probably only, <laughs> I don't know, 35 degrees. <laughs> and we're in Florida. So anyways, stay tuned. Well, you're going to get some walking today.
what I've decided is <clears throat> I really don't need a place down here, down south. As long as I have my shanty boat, you know, it's it's even better than having a house or land or something. I mean, I do still kind of have this notion of, you know, maybe buying a piece of land like in Tennessee or, or something like that. But, <clears throat> um, you know, wherever there's some water, you can pretty much just take a shanty boat anywhere. It's just like a tiny house. I don't think I'd build anything much bigger than what it is. Anyway, so, and you can move it around, you know, obviously. Thousands of miles if you have time. So, I guess in some ways, you know, it's kind of a self-explanatory question here. But it's like, when you got a shanty boat, you know, do you really need a house? I mean, I think it's nice to have a home base. I remember talking about this a lot with Scooter Tramp Scotty. And he's a big, he was, you know, it's been a while, but... I think he still thinks this way is what's the point you know of having a home base and property taxes and all that stuff and I do get that argument especially for his lifestyle but I do like to have a home base <clears throat> I like to have a place to store a few things keep tools and also just to kind of escape the world when you just kind of had enough you know of like living out in the world I love just going home and closing the door and turning up the heat and you know recouping and figuring out the next adventure so but I've already got home base like that. So, so yeah, a shanty boat's better than a second home, I think. What do you think? Look at this cool little house. And it's right, just right in a normal neighborhood with all sorts of normal houses. And then all of a sudden, bam. Probably get a pretty good deal on this place. There's an empty lot here. Oh my ghost, this looks like a former homeless camp. Let's go check it out. Looks like someone set up shop here for a while. There's another spot right up in here. This is actually the better spot in the trees here. Just trying to figure this out here. There's a there's a there's a broad here. Which makes me think. It was a woman, and they get, you know, given a lot of free stuff, and then they just have no place to make a home, so they just leave it. It's a dress there. There's a bunch of these, these compressed gas duster, and I'll bet you, if we look this up, this is one of those things that addicts huff, the, you know, gas huffers is my guess. This old liquor store is just right next door. I don't think it's open anymore, but back there in the corner, I don't want to aim the camera at them, but there's, here, I'll turn the phone around. Three Mexican guys cleaning up the parking lot. They're probably gonna start that place back up. Uh, it's one thing I notice every, almost everywhere I go. Mexicans are always working, working hard. They're just, they're just good workers, they're hard workers. That woman I just showed you came up and asked me for a dollar and Kind of decided I'm just I don't really want to give people money that are in that condition you know I just don't think it helps probably might even hurt but I did give her my my milk I got two milks at that gas station one to drink I already drank it and the other one was to take home for a coffee in the morning 
I can stop and get more. Um, and I said, you will drink it, right? And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm absolutely drinking. I haven't had anything to eat today. So, <laughs> so I gave her my milk, and I figured that can't hurt, right? There's all these... All these houses that are falling down or in various states of repair or lack of in this neighborhood. Which is really surprising to me. I would have, you know, I don't know anything about Pensacola, but I imagine there's just urban blight everywhere. And you'd think, you know, like this house right here would be valuable enough for someone to buy and fix up and... It's, this is one of many. Kind of an interesting property, like an old school motor lodge where you have like individual little buildings, maybe for like extended stays or something. I can't tell if it's open or not. I think it is. I think what happens is people just can't pay their rent and then the owners just, this is my guess, and they just throw their stuff out, all their clothes and everything. And man, it's hard being poor these days. So, I'll see if I can articulate this. Sometimes I feel like I'm living a really uh, hedonistic, decadent life, even though I, you know, live simpler than most people, but. You know, I, like, people that s devote their time to helping people truly in need, um, sometimes I think they've just got it right, you know, they've just, they've done it all, they've came to the conclusion that that's the way to, you know, make a difference in this world. It's certainly what God, I would imagine, would want us to do. You know, hold on a second. <laughs> it, but it, it kind of... You know, there's always that question of like, how how do you help people? Sometimes you think you're helping them when you're not. Um, you can't always just give things away, you know. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I could probably stay. I think all of us, but I'll just speak for myself. I could stand to put a little more time and effort into helping people. You know, people that people that could really benefit from the help, you know? I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say? Maybe you got some thoughts on it. This is sad. Looks like this house got taken out by a big oak. Look how big that was. It's completely demolished. This is a nice little piece of property too. All fenced in and it's got a little driveway coming in, very secluded. Okay guys, while we were exploring this, this house that had a tree fall on it, I saw this nice car back here. It just looked too nice. And I, and the, the badge, the, the owner, this car is stolen and I knew it was because it has a broken window. And I found her study Bible and her little note notebook in the trees over here. So I saw, I got her name. I'm not gonna put it on camera, but I got her name. Uh, and I, and I looked her up and I got her phone number and I called her. She's a sweet, sweet lady that uh, works at the school district and her car was stolen um, like a week ago and she didn't know where it was. So I called her, she's calling the police and they're gonna come and hopefully get her car back. So um, let me turn the phone around. I see this as you just put your, you just put your, you know, you put the intent out there to God to be helpful. I think I was just helpful if nothing else for her to get her study bible back it, it was it's it's all mar it's highlighted in different places and stuff and you know it's hard to lose something so precious to somebody so i put it on the front seat for her there and, and uh yeah hopefully that all works out so and i told her <laughs> so i didn't touch the car i i i pulled my sleeve up over i don't i don't want to get my fingerprints on any of that stuff but i mean you'd like to think they're not gonna blame it on me you know but but anyways yeah Hopefully I just, hopefully I got, you know, my point, um, ask God to use you, um, for good, for his will. And he will, 
that's an almost instantaneous answer right there in how I see it. So when I looked up her name, when I Googled her name, the first article that came up was uh, some kind of news program did a, a story on her that she lost her son. He was 34 years old. I didn't read too much into it because I was just standing there on the sidewalk. But uh, and the the kids that she works with at her school call her Granny. If if you saw a picture of her, she's this sweet black lady. I'm gonna guess she's like 60, you know, and you know. What a nice lady. She was like, she almost knew right away when I called her. I said, is this so-and-so? And she just went, yes. Did, 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 was my car? And I said, did your, was your car stolen? She said, yes. <laughs> I said, well, I'm looking at it right now. And I gave them the cross streets. And uh, so, oh, man. <laughs> the life in the big city, man, it sucks. I'm so glad. I mean, it's not perfect, but I'm so glad I live out in the woods. I'm so glad I live in a small town until it catches up with us there, so. Let's go, Beagle. Come on. Go. All right, we're heading back to the boat. Hopefully there'll be, the ore house will be open and we can, I don't know, maybe we'll have a hamburger. I don't think I've, I don't think I've eaten out in like a month, so they let us park in front of their place, so. If they got hamburgers, let's get one. Okay, guys and gals, let me show you what we're doing. We are going to put a brand new prop on the workhorse. We are tied up to Chico Island here during high tide. Yes, it's cold. <laughs> the water's cold and it's cold outside by Florida standards. So, this prop is taking a beating. Let me uh, put this one down, I'll tell you a little more about it. So this prop wasn't perfect before I left, but I have nicked up the edges, as you can see. And then yesterday I got the kayak line wrapped up, unfortunately, and I took off the diffusion ring. I'll show you a picture of that. Now, it doesn't really hurt anything. I can leave this prop on, but I just figure now's the time to do it. I'm gonna. This will be our spare from now on, so let's swap her out. Okay, guys, the uh, the cotter pin broke, and I had to use this punch to get it out. No big deal, but you should always carry one of these if you're going to do this. And what I recommend, I'm going to set it back here. Take a picture. Take a picture because there's stuff coming off here, and you want to put it back in order, okay? So take a picture before you take it apart. Okay, nice, shiny, brand new out of the box prop. Now I'm going to put back the components in order. Okay guys, so the cotter pin broke when I was pulling it out. I had to, I don't have an extra so I used a nail and I clipped off the end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check this in a day or two. Make sure it's not loosening up. I'm going to get a cotter cotter, can, cotter pin, I think that's what they're called as soon as I can. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to work. Well, good morning, guys and gals. We are finally leaving Chico Bayou in Pensacola, Florida here. About to pull up the anchor, and I wanted to show you just what a great spot this is. It's just sitting slack. It's like pretty good wind protection. I'll show you on the map where we are. It's been a really good spot to anchor for a couple nights. I also want to show you this pretty cool boat sitting at this guy's house. Nice little, nice little trawler there. Could not go wrong with. No idea what it is. 
<clears throat> okay, guys, let's hit the road. Stay tuned. We're going to stop at Chico Island on the way out and let Wavy do some running around and pooping and peeing. Oh, she already, she already knows it. <laughs> Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> We got some, got some dolphin action up here. Let me see if they'll breach again. And I saw they're chasing fish. I saw a bunch of fish jump. Come on, guys. <laughs> there they are. See that? Right there by the red can in front of us. We're going right through there, too. There, there he is. Yeah, they'll sit there and swim right in front of your boat. I mean, just like a couple feet off the bow. They're amazing. So smart. So playful. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I think he, he, he just, I don't know if you saw that, but he threw a fish up in the air. Or either that or chased it out. Let's see, let's get behind that. I got to drive at the same time here, guys, or I'd, I'd be out there in the deck getting the scooter out of the shot. Oh. Yeah, see that? He just threw that fish. He's throwing it around. They're, they're playing. There's two of them. Okay, got to steer here, guys. And we're filming at the same time. I can only teach the beagle. They're throwing some kind of fish around. <laughs> that is Chico Island right there. It's on our own little private island for like three days. We just pull up on the beach there. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to do a little three hour tour of Gilligan's Island here. That's our little beach right there. And we just drift on in. It's actually a really sweet spot. Okay guys, we're gonna do a little tour of this Chico Island. I wanna show you a couple things on it. So it's got a real beach here. It's not just mud, it's actual, it's actual sand, which is not the case on, in every one of these islands you'll come across. It's got a lot of junk. I mean, we're in basically the middle of Pensacola, so you'll see a lot of garbage and, you know, rubbish. Some of it's, you know, good wood and maybe it's getting it caught here. Yeah, let's walk around. I've already walked around this a couple times so I can kind of give you the, the guided tour here. So, there's a recycler over on this side. They go 24 hours a day. I think they're metal recycling and they're filling up this since we've been here for three days they've pretty much filled up this barge come around the back side here <laughs> maybe you're terrible so I'm just gonna point this out to folks you see all these oyster shells right I was yesterday changing out the prop on the barge and I didn't have any shoes on. I stepped on one of those and I sliced up my foot really good. Uh, so yeah, always wear some kind of, you know, shoes, something, you know, even like they're just old tennis shoes or something. Wear some shoes when you're in the water here. Goes without saying, but yeah, so here, I'll show you this. Uh, people have camped on this island. There's a campfire there. Campfire spot. Come back in here. There's a little camp spot back there. All these little clearings. But I'm looking for, you won't believe it, but when I find it, I'll you'll be amazed <laughs> at what's on this island. Give me a minute. All right, I see it. I see it peeking out. You'll be like, how was that hiding? Good question. There is a old sailboat hull. I have no idea how it got up here. Must have been a really high tide or maybe it was dragged up here or something, but yep, we found the SS Minnow. Lots of beer cans. 
Now here's something I want to show you. It has some beautiful trees on this island. Look at this. Beautiful oaks. Now there's a fella on the Great Loop Facebook page who responded to one of my posts and he said that his dad, either his dad or his grandfather, owned this island back in like the 50s or 60s. And now it might be a park or something. I mean, it just looks like it's nothing now. I mean, it, there's no enforcement of anything. But um, his family owned it. And he said that when he was a kid, they, him and his brother, I want to say, came out and planted, you know, brought these trees out when they were like saplings, you know, and those burlap, burlap sacks for the roots and planted these trees. So, you know, it's very possible this is... These trees were planted by that fella. If you see this video, I did tell him I'm going to make one. Um, comment below and I'll, I'll pin the comment. And tell us a little more if you can remember. But, you know, maybe these are the maybe these are the beautiful trees. Now that's a pine there. I think that might be another... I don't know. Yeah, that's a pine. Um, but yeah, I mean, this island... If it wasn't right smack in the middle of an industrial part of, you know, Pensacola, Florida, it would just be a little paradise. I mean, it probably still could be made so. <clears throat> Got these little trails. If I was on a canoe or a kayak adventure instead of a barge shanty boat, adventure I would you know camp in places like this this would be the places I would seek out you know because they're, they're safe but convenient yeah, you can see there's big trees big trees on this island this is a natural island you know this is not uh, not man-made or dredged you know they call it spoilings from when they're dredging Okay, guys, I'm trying to get some poop and some pee out of this beagle before we get back on the boat and keep going down the ICW. I'm going to take a bath, too, but as always, I spare you that footage. And for that, you should be thankful. I never show you my baths, which I take almost every day. <laughs> Salt water, fresh water, doesn't matter. <laughs> I prefer fresh water, though. I, I'm looking forward to getting to Crystal River because that's a natural bathing paradise with all those springs. And you'll see. <laughs> okay, guys. That's uh, Chico Island in Pensacola. Uh, Chico Bayou. still here.